Job chapter 10. Job's still speaking. My soul is weary of my life. Yeah, I mean, he's got such problems. He's, you know, people who have suffered much understand where Job's coming from. He wants it to end. Who wouldn't? I will leave my complaint upon myself. And he already said in chapter 7, verse 11, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Job is saying everything he's saying. He's complaining. But in actuality, he's answering these men to the false charges against him. I will speak in bitterness of my soul. I'm going to complain. I will say unto God, Job speaking, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendest. That's the only time that word shows up with me. Give me the opportunity to speak to God. Okay. Chapter 40, verse 3. Let's jump ahead. Chapter 40 of Job, verse 3. Give me the opportunity to speak to God. Job, chapter 40, verse 3. And we'll look at verse 1. Moreover, the Lord answered Job, saying, Okay, this is God speaking to Job. Shall he that contendeth, the only time that word shows up, with the Almighty, instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Okay, here comes Job. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then the Lord speaks. Job, you said if God was, why are you going to condemn me, God? Now, Job is right with God. We've already seen it. Job is angry, bitter because of, of pain and sorrow and suffering. As I said before, I think people are going to be allowed to say their their ways and their things and their feelings at the great white throne judgment. There'll be plenty of time because there's no more time. And I don't think they're going to fall like Job fell in chapter 40. That rich man in hell never changed his attitude, but go tell my family. And I think, and I think, I can't. Take this and put it in the garbage can if it's if I'm wrong, but I think people are gonna say, God, what you know what gives you the right? Lord, didn't I do this? Lord, didn't I do that? Didn't I do this in ye? Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. So Job is angry, and he already says, I'm bitter. Verse 3. It is good unto thee, God, that thou shouldest oppress. It's good, God, that you're oppressing people. That thou shouldst despise the work of thy hands and shine upon the counsel of the wicked. Is it good, Lord? Is it what you're doing to me, reality, Job? Does it really make you look good? Does it really make you look powerful? What's it do for the wicked that look upon me? Say, aha. Again, Job's bitter, he's angry, getting no help, has no answers, he's confused. And who knows what the wicked would be saying about you. Job is a righteous man. They may be looking at Job like, wow, if that was me, I would have given up. And you'll be amazed when you're going through your, pro your trials, your tribulations, your problems, whatever is God has put in your life. And you, you know, oh... And people may be looking at you like, wow. I've gone through that many times. In my life, I've had people look at me, how are you doing so well? I'm like, I'm not doing well. I'm, I'm panicky. I'm nervous. I don't look like it to me. Oh. It's that peace of God. <coughs> Has thou eyes of flesh? Now get verse 4 and 5. Now who could answer that with God? Jesus. For seeth thou as a man seeth? Jesus. Are thy days as the days of man? Right now, no. Are thy years as a year as man's days? Thirty-three and a half years, Jesus. Jesus is the answer to Job's complaint. Come on, God. Can you feel like me? Do you know what I'm feeling? Oh yeah. 
and Jesus Christ is going to feel quadrillion times more worse than what Job. When man and sinner and the devil takes it all out and just... Job never went to hell. Jesus did. Job wasn't beaten. Jesus will be beaten. Job has never been punched by Roman soldiers. Jesus will. So what Job says, God, you know, you don't know what it's like to be a man. Wait a few years, many years. And God and Jesus and Job will have a conversation one day. I answered you. I answered you. That thou, God, inquirest after my iniquity and searches after my sin. All right, God, are you like a man? Do you have time like a man? All right, that's Jesus. Who goes after our sin? Jesus. Put your sins upon Jesus and he'll cleanse you and watch you. Look what Job has said a mouthful and he doesn't even know who he's talking about. All the Old Testament saints did look forward to the cross. Job has no idea what he just said, but he prophesied of Jesus. He prophesied the years of God in the flesh and dealing with our sins. Thou, God, knowest that I am not wicked. Okay. Chapter 1 and 2. Yep. There is none that can deliver out of thy hand. Uh, who is verse 4, 5, and 6 about? <laughs> Jesus. Now for Job right now, nobody. Job says, I don't have no daysmen. What's uh, 1 Timothy 2.15? What is uh, 1 John 2.1? The mediator, the advocate, our go between between God and us as sinners. One day, Jesus will answer what Job's reading about. And when Jesus finishes the atonement upon the cross and is buried and arose the third day according to the scriptures and ascended unto the Father, see at the right hand of the Father, that atonement that Job has done with the bulls and cut and calves and whatever he's offered for himself and his family, Jesus will finish that atonement of Job. Like the people of the law. Job will get the answer from the Lord. And the Lord will be taken care of for Job. By God himself. Now watch verse 8. Remember, Job is the first book ever to be written in the Bible. That thy hands have made me and fashioned me together round about. God, Job says there's a creator, not evolution. Long before Moses wrote anything, God told them, God spoke to them through Adam, through Eve, through Cain, through, well, I don't know how far Abel got along, and through the children of, uh, of Adam, the grandchildren of Adam, and Enoch, and Noah, and his son. God made it all. In the world today, all around the, the, the people and tribes and whatever they're broken up into, there's that story of a worldwide flood, a man getting into a boat with animals provided by God. Without the Word of God. You have the Word of God today and they teach evolution. God, you made me. Yet, Thou, God, dost destroy me. Now, is that true? No. The wages of sin is death, Job. But Job don't know that. God, you're my creator, but look what you do. Now he's starting to blame God. What'd you make me for? For all this suffering? That's not God. It is because Adam and Eve said, okay, let's eat. The knowledge of evil. Satan didn't tell him about that, did he? You know what you know what Adam and Eve and all their children in Job now know? There's pain, there's sorrow, there's suffering. And it had nothing to do with God. God warned them. Don't eat of that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of it. That's why there's hospital police stations, murders and killings. Not because of God. Because man disobeyed God. Remember, I, Job, beseech thee, God, 
that thou hast made me as the clay. How do you know Genesis 2? And wilt thou bring me into dust again? Genesis 3. Job knows more than we do with the, with a computer and be able to get the Bible on a computer. Genesis is not written unto Moses after Exodus 21 when he goes in that mount. The Sabbath, when God rested on the Sabbath day, was never revealed to the only to the Jewish people. Now they may have heard about the Sabbath day, they may have heard about the seventh day. God rested that day from all his work. It may have been told to the tales. But it had never been written down. There's more knowledge in the first book of Job, archaic Job, than there is today of high society and high education. Verse 10. Has thou, God, not poured me, Job, out as milk? And curdled, that's the only time that word shows up. Me like cheese. It's when the pH drops, it becomes more acidic. Protein molecules join, uh, join together. Now I don't think Job's is using you know here's here's some cheese, here's some milk turning to cheese in the sun. It may be happening to his body right now. The acid, the protein to his body. I'm going to say that because I don't know much about it. I don't think Job's the, is pulling this out. The stuff that comes out of the boils looks like cheese. It looks like cheese, yeah. And I also think with the pH in the body and, it put the, and the, uh, the protein and all that, it has to be something that he knows more than I know. And if you know something, contact me and tell me. I'm willing to learn. But isn't that thing, you know, old milk turned to cheese. Thou, God, has clothed me with skin and flesh. Genesis 2. And fence me with bones and sinews. Tendons. That fence is, that's rebar. You know, you put that straw or the rebar in the cement to make the cement and make the, the, the clay bricks. It gives them more of a foundation, gives them more stability. And what Job's known without no medical degree of cat scans and pet scans and x-rays, there are bones inside of me. If I didn't have any bones, I'd be squishing. I'd be squashing. And if there were such things as boneless chickens, they'd be goo in the, bar in the barnyard. Job has no x-rays. He has no cat scan. But he knows what's inside of man. By who? By God. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. God told these people before the Bible, and these people that love the Lord, He told them revelation. How do you think these pyramids were built? How do you think that all this great stuff that man can't do today? Because of God and the gods, the fallen angels. Listen, God's talking with Enoch one day. Enoch goes, bye. God speaks to Noah one day. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drain out this whole world. Here's a boat. I want you to make this boat in three. And we don't know what the capability of Noah was. He may never, he may not be able to sling a hammer at all. But Job knew. Verse 12. Thou God has granted me life and favor. You've given me everything, Lord. I'm living. So he's balancing back and forth. It's God's fault, but God's blessing him. Everything I owe to God, including these problems. And thy visitation has preserved my spirit. God has visited me. And that's what God did to these people back then. Without a written word. And these things has thou, God, hid in thy heart. I know that this is with thee. Alright? There's a whole rash of things that just happened to me, God. And you got it hidden. I have no idea what's going on. 
Job is pleading to the Creator, God, you made me, help me. But I don't know why. I have no idea why this, and he doesn't find out at all. Verse 14, if I sin, if, then thou, God, markest, that's the only time that word shows up, me, and thou, God, will not acquit, that's the first time that word shows up, won't acquit me from my iniquity. Oh, look what Job just said. God, I'm a sinner. And I'm going to be charged with my sin. I can't say that today with the sins that are under the blood. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin. They look forward to Calvary. Job's not looking forward to Calvary. He's not looking for that blood that told me. He said, listen, if I sin, my iniquity, I'm marked. I'm marked. If I be wicked, if, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. Where have you seen that story? Lord God, be merciful to me and sin me. Where you lift up his head to heaven? Oh, the other guy, oh Lord, I'm not like him. I'm not, you know. But look at that guy, that righteous guy that Jesus pointed out. He wouldn't lift his head to heaven and says, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that guy didn't have the blood atonement either. Christ was living at that point when he gave that illustration. And there may have been two men right there and Jesus telling him what's going on. For the Old Testament saints, yeah, it was finished when Jesus said it is finished. Yet will I not lift up my head. Here we go. I am full of confusion. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's going on. I don't know how it's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where it's going. Everything. Who, what, where, why, how. I don't know. And you might feel that way in your life. God is not going to send you a fortune cookie. You're going to open up. This is why it's happening. There are plenty of Christians who have died with ailments and problems and all that and never once in their life like Job ever found out why. Now they say we're going to be told in heaven, are we? I don't know. God does not have to explain himself. Well, listen. A prayer would be properly to God. When you got ailments, troubles, and I'm trying, I'm trying to put it all in everything to everything that people have suffered. The question is not, why are you doing this, God? The question is, why are you doing this, God? Wait a minute, you just said, to what lesson can I learn something, God, that you put this in my life? What am I doing wrong that's causing this? What can I do right so we can get back in fellowship? Or, Lord, if this has happened because of somebody else, and it does, Lord God, help me to be faithful so that person can be faithful. To the honor and glory, what's ever going on in my life, let it be to your honor and glory, Lord. That's the perfect, unconfused attitude we should have about our problems. But we fail. Because guess what? Pain hurts. Therefore, see thou my affliction. What? I'm going to feel confusion. Therefore, see thou my affliction. What's causing my problem? What's going? It could be you, God. I, I don't know. I got affliction. I have no idea. See it, God. God sees it. Chapter 2. Everything you moves against Job, I, I allowed you, and he still gains its integrity. But Job don't know that. For he increases, that's the first time that word shows up, the affliction. Job's condition's getting worse and has been added by three friends and only two of them spoke so far. And we're going to get the third one, chapter 11, Lord willing. 
And I always say, so far, so bad, when we get to chapter 11. Job is not getting comfort. Listen, you know, somebody's like this saying, buy them a bottle of Biden Pro for right open up your mouth. Make them a soup, a cake, or something, rather than open your mouth. Or just sit there and listen to them and don't care what they say. I, I mean, don't harass them. Just let them say what they need to say. Let them not pay $400 for a counselor. You sit there and you be the listening to them. Uh-huh. Really? I don't understand that. That's not what these guys are doing. They increase it. Thou, God, Huntest me as a fierce lion. No. Again, thou showest thyself marvelous upon me. God, you're chasing me down, but you're just so wonderful and great. See how confused he is? The lion was the type of devil. Say that a lion goes and steals and kills people. That's when people go after a lion. When a lion has invaded a tribe and someone has been carried away dead, like they do, then they go after that lion because it's become a threat because it will come back and attack again knowing, hey, inside those little white things or tents or whatever they live in, there's nice chewy stuff inside. I go get some more. Then you got to kill them. Job hasn't killed anybody. But an enemy has become a lion because he's seeking whom he devoured. And again, thou showest thyself marvelous upon me. How wonderful you are. In everything give thanks. Praise ye the Lord. Thou renewest thy witnesses against me. <coughs> Pain, suffering, anger. I don't know what the witnesses would be against him. Unless he's talking about his friends. God, you sent these morons here. No, he didn't. The devil probably did. And increases, first time, last time that word shows up, thine indignation upon me. God, you are getting angry and angry and angry with me. It's got to be getting worse and worse and worse. No mercy. Changes and war are against me. Everything's changing. His whole life went through a chain and a war. So what's the Bible? What does Paul write about the Christian when you had a warfare with, with powers and spiritual and, and, and principalities in high places? You better put your armor on. That same devil that attacked Job is the same devil that would attack us. We have armor. We have the Holy Spirit and Jesus making intercession for it. Job doesn't. Thank God we got penicillin by God. Thank God we have pain medicine by God. Job don't. That would be Ephesians 6 through 11. We are in a war, whether we're fighting men or not, we're fighting the devil and his angels. <coughs> Wherefore, then thou, wait, then hast thou, God, brought me forth out of the womb. Here we go back again. Why did I not die in that womb? Oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no eye has seen me. There he goes, back to chapter 3. You know what these, these two morons have done? He's going all the way back to where he was in chapter 3. I just wish I was dead. There's been no relief. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And now you're charging me with all these faults. And not my days few. Let me go back to the days again. Cease then. And let me alone. That is the wrong word to say. Because God is actually helping Job. Can you imagine if God said, answered Job's prayer right now, the devil walked back up to him, hey, have you considered my servant? How great, look at, look at how much he's suffering still. He loves me. He's still doing right. 
What was that, Job? Leave you alone? Where'd God answer that prayer? All right, Satan, go get him. Do you think Satan would take Job nice and quietly while he sleeps? Or do you think Satan would bust his butt and make it even worse? This is not the time to say, God, leave me alone. This is the time to say, God, how do I get closer to you? How do I get your peace, your love, your comfort, your patience, your long-suffering? All given to us by the Holy Spirit when we get saved by Jesus Christ. Job don't have that. Not in the Old Testament. Some people disagree with me. The Holy Spirit came upon the people in the Old Testament. He didn't come in them. Oh, that I had given up the ghost and no eye have seen me. Should I, I should have been as though I had not been, no life. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Death are not my days few. Cease then. Stop it. Let me alone that I may take comfort a little. He wants mercy and grace, grace through death. Elijah asked for that. Jonah asked for that. Job asked for that. I'm trying to think. There's a few others. But that's suicide, being killed, death is not always the answer, and don't always get God the good credit He gets. We have got 32 more chapters, no, 42 more chapters, 32 more chapters. What if God ended Job's life right now and answered, we would be left with a lot of what's and whips. Take comfort a little. Before I go hence, I shall not return. There's no revelation of the afterlife until Jesus Christ. To Job, there's that one general resurrection you find in Daniel. That's what they know. I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. Once I go, I'm not coming back. True. A land of darkness, the grave. The hole in the ground. The sepulcher. As darkness itself. And of the shadow of death. Without any order. Where the light. Is as darkness. There's no light in the death. There's no light in. in you don't come back a second life. Once you die. Now Job doesn't understand the soul. To him. You, like the book of Ecclesiastes. I die. I die. I go in the grave. One day God will raise us up, he'll judge us, and we'll go wherever God will have us to go. That's what Job is thinking. That's the only revelation he has. 